We know recently the massive backlash towards the Minecraft mob vote process has gotten worse than ever. We're at a point now where all things considered members of the Minecraft development team have decided to step forward with their take on the situation and exactly why the ending of the Minecraft mob vote is placed into the spotlight recently in the first place. In 2023, things have been especially bad within the Minecraft player based community in terms of the response to the return of the yearly mob vote event as it's revealed that the protesting movement to combat the whole process has been entitled Stop the Mob Vote, Put an End to the Scrapping of Great Ideas, which is in reference to the other two candidates year after year that don't end up making it into the final cut following the vote. The ones that end up being lost, causing them to seemingly get scrapped forever. But this aspect right here is actually what most people get wrong. And the truth was actually part of the response the Mojang team made to the rise of this movement in the first place against the mob vote and how bad things have gotten this year specifically. For starters, a Minecraft gameplay developer at Mojang responded to the original backlash in terms of the lost content with a post reading, some players really want new mobs, others may want technical flexibility or new blocks, some may just want performance improvements. Prioritizing is always a compromise, which is essentially in regards to the different conflicting demands fans have towards certain events and how it's meant to be a compromise. The scrap design misconceptions come into play with the additional statements made by the user King B Dogs, another Mojang team developer, who starts by speaking up on this same topic. The idea that every mob not selected in the yearly event is cast away, set to never make a return, obviously upsetting all the voters who wanted to see it win in the polls originally. The developer tells us, you must be misinformed. The losers aren't lost forever. They're put into the ideas library where we'll eventually implement them later on when the time is right. Essentially, this gives us hope that all of the introduced concepts in the past may be tied with some future update in which they're involved in some way. When asked about a clarification for what when the time is right means in regards to when fans could be expecting the losers of mob votes in the past to be brought back, the developer goes into more detail with any time from now until the end of the universe. There's no telling when the right time is, but it's good to have these filed as popular ideas the community seems to like. Which for starters tells us it's more of a community thing and that the consensus regarding all of the other mob vote candidates, the ones the whole campaign and massive movement this year were created for in the first place, are meant to maybe come back. Which you'd have to admit is a lot better than alternatively assuming all the losers are never giving a second thought at all after not being selected. That at least provides some hope for the future. But things additionally started escalating within the process of the movement against the 2023 mob vote, with the alternative claim that developers were simply too lazy in general, supposedly evidenced by the idea that they don't take the extra time out to showcase all the mobs and then add in each and every one, rather than just putting all the work into the winner. They claim that modders could simply do the same task, which was responded to by an actual member of a mod team themselves, with the argument that the mob votes are not full out fleshed ideas. They're made up of Mojang's random ideas that they don't know what to do with, and they're basically asking us, which one do you want first? Keep in mind, they're making an entire update and this is essentially just the appetizer. Essentially, the process of these votes is shown to highlight the winner and then look for opportunities in which it would make sense to add some of the scrap designs in the future as long as they don't end up ruining the experience. That's basically the mindset developers have to work through and why the entire process is so difficult in the first place. We see proof of this, something pretty crucial to the whole situation, with the fact we're told an iteration of the LA, for example, the actual winner of the 2021 mob vote was supposed to be part of the nether update, but the developers didn't know where to put them specifically and didn't have time to figure out the whole situation in the first place. The actual design ended up being on the simpler side as it was more of a basic prototype. Those responsible for the mob vote system in the first place don't want to add all three mobs because they're in the ideas bin for a reason. To them, it simply has to make sense to add them with the right opportunity to do so. And we saw just that with a simple similar styled event that featured a frog mob. The frog was part of the biome vote held years back in which, just like the mob vote, three options were presented with the goat accompanied by the mountain biome coming out on top. We know in this specific case, despite the mountain biome already being implemented alongside the goat, the frog ended up being added in regardless later on with the swamp, which is what points us to the concept of competition losers still serving a role even if they weren't originally chosen to be added in first. And despite the biome vote situation being technically different from the mob vote, I believe this sort of process is what developers are talking about when they say these mobs can be added when the time is right, without a specific answer to when that'll be. 
yet. But the narrative recently prevails that the fall of the mob vote could be caused by the building and building of players against the idea of mob votes in the future to take place how they've been previously. And the reason for this to be so prevalent this time around is partially due to the fact that there are additional features accompanied by each candidate that essentially make the stakes of the whole ordeal a whole lot higher in comparison to the past. We know there to be dog armor associated with the armadillo candidate, for example, the ability to change the functionality of the game with the use brought to us through the crab claw, and the increased speeds we're able to reach when we're boosted by the penguin. Accompany this with the fact this year in particular features actual animals players might feel a more personal connection to, opposed to more fictionalized creature concepts like we've seen in the past, and you've got yourself a growing situation against the mob boat process that's gotten bigger than ever. This is why we keep consistently getting around 20,000 signatures a day recently regarding actually making a change in stopping the mob boat events. As the whole process was meant to be for the sole purpose of creating a more player focused interactive event, it's likely there's going to be some sort of official response to the backlash if it keeps going on how it has been regarding the future of these events. We know in the case of Mojang's development team at the very least, they aren't necessarily responsible for making these sought after changes happen in the first place. As another important aspect King B Dogs touches on is the fact developers slash designers aren't typically the ones who control how things like mob votes operate. They appreciate the feedback, but not much they're able to do other than forward that feedback which I'm assuming has reached a pretty substantial amount at this point. The best indication of the future of these mob votes is gonna be shown by the approach Mojang end up taking next year, because it seems as though they've changed up little things in the past, slowly building on the event for a while now, which obviously led us to a point where each candidate also has bonus features that go along with them. We're at least aware the concern many have with the whole thing will be pushed onto those responsible and that all the important aspects are going to be taken into consideration. We know it was never Mojang's intention to specifically cause problems, so at the very least, it's pointless to call the developers out for being lazy and not doing enough. As again, we're literally told the developers aren't the ones responsible for how the event goes. It's valid to have an issue with all the designs many believe to simply never be making a return or implemented in the game after losing the mob vote, but with all the feedback they've received regarding how they could potentially make changes, it's only right to wait out the response rather than personally attacking any members or lashing out in any way. But as for all of the other super important information you're gonna need to know about this situation, we know there to be additional crucial elements of the 2023 vote and everything involving what's actually gonna end up happening in the future.